Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Fruits Basket 2019 Episode 2. So yeah, as I mentioned in the other video I put up earlier, uh, Fruits Basket is now a Monday reaction series. So every Monday, which is a few days after it actually airs, I will be posting my uh, reaction to the new episodes. Um, at least for the time being, unless anything changes. This is how it's going to be. Um, I, I, I don't actually like having to put it on, uh, have Monday uh, and Tuesday for um, uh, for One Punch Man Season 2 as well, by the way. I don't really like having to put them on, on, on like, full scheduled stuff to, uh, uh, to make basically almost every single day this week have two reactions in it. I, I'm not really a huge fan, fa fa blah, 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 blah. A huge fan of that but at the same time I don't really see another way to do it and even with that I'm still doing Carol on Tuesday just whenever I can get to it after it airs so it's just like there's so many shows and it's I don't want to get behind on any of them so um so for at least the time being we are going to be doing uh, fruits basket on Mondays and we'll just take it from there um so yeah in our first episode of Fruits Basket, uh, we got to know Toru Honda. Toru is this uh, cute uh, young girl who's just trying to kind of get by. Um, her grandfather's house is being renovated, so she's living in a tent in the woods, um, which happens to be near the Soma compound, a uh, small house that belongs to the Soma family, a family of people who have the ability ability to basically turn into the animals of the Zodiac. Um, now, as I said last time, I had seen the original series like years and years and years ago, like almost 10 years ago, eight to 10 years, I believe. Um, I, I had seen the original series. I had read a good portion of the manga, so I am not completely blind on this. Um, but it's also been a shit ton of time, so I don't remember everything. I don't remember every little detail about it. Um, but yeah, like, we are introduced to characters in the first episode, uh, specifically three members of the Soma household. There's Shigure Soma, who is the dog of the Chinese Zodiac. His character is kind of very laid back and, uh, funny and relaxed. He, he's kind of the, uh, he's kind of the nice, friendly, um, chill member of the family. We have Yuki Soma, who's the pretty boy. He, he's pretty, he's um, popular, he's smart, and a little bit, a, a little bit on the side of at least appearing to others a little high and mighty. Um, we know the truth that like when he avoided that girl and stuff who was just trying to hug him, uh, we know why he was doing that now, because at the end of episode one, it revealed the big secret of the Soma household. Uh, but then we also have Kyo Soma, who appeared at the very end of the first episode, who turns into the cat of the Chinese Zodiac. And by the way, Yuki turns into the rat. Um, I forgot to mention that. But yeah, Kyo turns into the cat. Kyo is more brash and flighty. He tends to let his actions speak for him rather than his words and doesn't think things through as often as he should. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go too much further into the characters for spoiler reasons for those who might be experiencing for this for the first time. Um, but what I will say is that I am excited for this because, again, I grew up with this series, you could say in a way. This was one, I mean, it wasn't one of the first anime I have seen by any means. Like, I had seen, like, Pokemon and Digimon, Sailor Moon, Cardcaptor Sakura, Dragon Ball Z, all, all of that kind of stuff well before I ever checked this one out. It's even, like, One Piece and whatnot, and Yu-Gi-Oh! and other stuff. Um, so it's not by any means, like, even, I, I wouldn't even call it one of my early anime. But it's probably my earliest experience with this kind of show with a shoujo anime. Um, and it's... I mean, Cardcaptor Sakura 
you could consider shoujo as well. But I never really got huge into that. I just kind of watched it every now and again when it was on. Uh, this was the first one I, I got into. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I remember watching it. I remember reading. Uh, I, I borrowed the manga from the uh, from the school library and stuff. Um, and and uh, Shigure was always kind of my favorite of these three we've met so far. Um, I, I always just really enjoyed it. It was never my favorite or anything, but I did like it. Um, the first episode also introduced a couple more aspects. It introduced Toru's uh, two friends who are protective of her against uh, Yuki's fan club and stuff. Yuki's fan club is also introduced, and they're, yeah, about what I remember. <laughs> um, we also see Toru's grandfather, who seems a little bit senile, but still there enough to where he still has a good heart and still can make uh, informed decisions to some degree. Um... And we definitely get a lot of interesting lore and whatnot with it. Um, so yeah, it's going to be fun to continue watching this and trying to remember exactly where this goes and when. Um, I can tell you right now, there is one character specifically I am waiting for. Um, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, some of you may be able to guess who that is, um, if you just know the kind of characters and stuff that really, that I, I really get into. Um, but you'll see when, when that comes. Um, either way, I am excited for this because, uh, we're going to get, uh, the explanation of things after the end of the first episode, well, after it ended with, you know, with Toru hugging them all and them turning into animals. So we're going to get the explanation stuff. Um, I will say, I do love the art and animation to this. Um, Chibi Reviews, or I think it was Chibi. Was it Chibi? It was Chibi or someone else, um, someone else I watched, mentioned that the art style and animation just is so many leagues better um, that it's just, it, it dwarfs the original and stuff. Um, and I agree with that. The voice acting is great. The... Um, uh, the just the lighting and shading in a lot of scenes the the soundtrack is great everything just works excellently together um but we're gonna get on with it um so when the screen fades to black pause this redirect and go to the description below follow link to the reaction and after you watch it come back here to the redirect and resume play because after it fades to black and then fades back in everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode so that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so we have another good episode. Um, this one definitely started to give more to Keo as a character, who was only introduced at the end of the first episode. Um, and it developed uh, Toru's uh, beginning relationships, mostly with Yuki and Keo how she sees them, and how uh, they see her in comparison. It also brings up a couple things that are starting to build up to the future, such as the mention of the head of the family, Akito Soma. Um, I will not reveal anything more about Akito right now, obviously, to keep away spoilers, but let's just say I am really waiting for when that comes up. Um... And yeah, there's a lot more that is going to be addressed in the future um, that I'm really excited to see as well. Um, but what we had here, uh, so from Toru and Kyo uh, point, Kyo is, he tends to be very angry and not think things through when he just says something. And a lot of times it causes him to say things against uh, Toru that he doesn't mean. Uh, and we see quite a bit of that in this episode, of him, like, being rude and inconsiderate and mean to her. But it's not something he's intentionally trying to do. Uh, she starts to think that he hates her, but after they meet again in the woods, uh, where she mistakes him as a pervert, um, his attempt at apology makes her realize it was all a misunderstanding. Uh, her relationship with... Uh, <laughs> With Yuki is a little different here, because um, Yuki clearly, uh, we have in this episode where it's revealed that when uh, Yuki was young, 
He was accidentally hugged when playing with a girl. And it caused him to turn into his rat form, and it caused a big problem to where memories had to be um, kind of erased through this hypnotism method. Um, and it was upsetting for him, clearly. It's something that he's afraid is going to have to happen again to Toru. So we see that uh, he doesn't want to see this happen again. He doesn't want... he. He's enjoying spending time with her. He's enjoying getting to know her. And he doesn't want to lose that connection. Like he's lost probably many connections in the past. Um, but when she tells him, it's like, I don't care about this. It's like, if, if my memory's erased, then it's erased. As long as it protects you guys, just make friends with me again. And it's like... What what really hits him, though, is because in the past he was told by Akito that no one would like him if they found out about his rat form. And so when Toru uh, basically tells him, it's like, yeah, I, I, I still really like you and everything. It, it hits him. You could tell it clearly hits him emotionally, that it, it really means something to him. Just like at the same time, when she tells Kyo that she loves him and that she's always loved the cat... It means something immensely powerful for him. Someone who's always felt unloved. And that's kind of one of the big draws of this series. How well it delves into the depths of these characters. How it takes their insecurities, their worries, their fears. And how Toru comes in as this beacon of hope and light in their lives. Um... Laura Bailey, who was the English dub voice actor for Toru in the original anime, had stated before that, um, and I might be getting the exact details wrong because I had only heard about this uh, um, like shortly before the, uh, the new season, the new series began, um, but I believe it was something along the lines of she stated that Toru always just filled her with happiness and hope and just positive energy. That this character is a beacon of that. It, amongst just a world that isn't. A world that isn't so positive. A world that isn't so happy and so accepting. And, I mean, I'm there myself. I, I, I faced a lot of unacceptance from people. I faced a lot of issues with that. I've, I, I see other people facing it too, in ways that I could never imagine. And this world is so unaccepting in so many ways. So yeah, seeing someone like Toru, who is an exceptional beacon of acceptance and light and just general love for people, it's a beautiful thing and it's really encouraging. It's something that you wish you could see more of just in the real world alone, but especially in more media. A character who is just so pure of heart, so beautifully, beautifully accepting towards anyone and everyone, no matter what is going on in their lives. Someone who's, who's just understanding and who will listen and who will care for someone else when others won't. It's like, yeah that's going to definitely raise your spirits a bit. Um, so I, I can definitely understand that she would be seen as this beacon of light in a dark world. Not just in the show, but in terms of like, just a, as a character for people to look up to. Um, but yeah, as I said, this episode also gave a lot of hints at stuff to come. A lot. There, there are some big, big uh, setups starting in this episode. Um, and for those who know what is to come, like I'm sure you saw it too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, I, I can't wait till the other members of the Soma clan are introduced. I can't wait till so many other plot threads come into play. Because there, there's a lot that this series is going to do that might that might surprise you in, in ways that you wouldn't think a series like this would. Um, and, and that's another reason why I like it so much. It's, it's just really that good. 
it, it has a lot of great twists, a lot of great surprises. Um, but either way, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this second episode of Fruits Basket 2019. What did you think of Keo as a character now that he's been a lot more formally gone into? What do you think of the um, just ongoing narrative and what they're doing with these characters? And uh, what do you think uh, they might be setting up for the future? As always, if you know what's coming, no spoilers. Uh, for those who are not in the know, do not spoil anything. And for those who uh, who just know what's coming and everything, I may not remember every little detail. In fact, it's very likely, <laughs> I, I, I could pretty much guarantee you I don't remember everything. So please, just no spoilers in the comments. Because, um, hell, if I can get surprised by something again, like that'll be worth it. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in, and for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles,